So I want to get through the facts of all this. You know, if I was to smack Barbara Couch Williams in her, you know, unethical, unconscious, ugly face, what would I get? Five years in prison? If I assaulted, if one person assaults another person and you're convicted for it, that's like five years in prison, right? But Barbara Couch Williams assaulted me. She never felt bad about any of it. My abusers didn't feel bad about it. I don't know. I wonder if my if Barbara tried to put her evilness into my abuser's life or if my abusers were always evil. I only saw Barbara Williams less than 50 times in my life. So when I was in college and she says, you're ruining the family. Barbara actually divorced Ralph Benton Deaton. She destroyed a Deaton family and then married a stepfather. And then the two kids of the Deaton had to basically they got abused. And they had step-siblings to compete with. So, yeah, Barbara destroyed the fucking family. Talk about destroying a fucking family. You can't destroy a fucking... You got rid of the mother. You got rid of the father. You brought in somebody else. Now, you're not even paying attention to the kids. The kids had two parents. They went from having two parents to zero parents. So, she's barely a part of my life. Thank the good Lord for that. Thank God Barbara Williams, that piece of shit, that racist motherfucker, barbed wire. She is a barb. All that the barbed wire has to do is just get one little fiber of your fucking. You're destroying the family. What are you talking about? You're not even really a part of the family, but apparently she was. I guess Lucy respected white racist pieces of shit, child abusing pieces of shit. Barbara never had to beg Lucy to be a human to her. Barbara never had to beg Lucy to do shit. Barbara had a man, she had a house, and I guess women are just supposed to compete with each other or something. It doesn't matter if they're down and out. I didn't have a house. I didn't have my ha Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I'm supposed to care about these, my aunt's health problems, and then she's got a man. She's living in sin according to the Catholic way, but I'm supposed to, she's supposed to be loved, and she's supposed to, ha her health problems are okay, but then they vote against health care. So are you for people's health or are you against people's health? They're a bunch of hypocritical motherfuckers. They're ugly. I got two jobs. I'm going to college and I'm homeless. Why? Because I got abusers as parents. You know how it was when we were coming up? You know how it was when we were coming up? When you go to college just so your parents would stop attacking you? When they they just stop hitting you and humiliating you and talking down to you like you're a pile of shit? Yeah, that's why... You know how it was for us farm slaves in Kentucky. We would go to college and... Over at house, she would cut my hair. She'd bend the fuck out of my ear as she was cutting my hair. I'm screaming on the inside, but... This is a child abuser. I'm not allowed to speak up. I'm not allowed to speak up for myself. Kathy's allowed to hit me. Rosie is allowed to shoot a shotgun at me. Lucy's just driving me to these people's houses so they abuse me. They didn't care about her. She's trying to establish her homestead. She didn't have any parents. Didn't have his parents. Didn't have her brothers and sisters. Nobody fucking gave a shit about her. But she still gives a fuck about these assholes. And she's fucking my life. She's been fucking my life ever since the beginning. Getting baked beans on the fucking Nova so we can go milk Charlie's cows? No, I just, I'm going to stay here and take a nap. I'm going to go ahead and get my fucking, I need eight hours of sleep. I need five things, my Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And then once I get to two years of age, there's a development. There's a range of uh, human development. Once you get to two, then you get to five, and then you get to ten. There's, you know, different stages of a child's life. My abusers don't know that. They just want to attack and use terrorism and they're just shithead motherfuckers. And they assume, well, see, violence and terrorism and meanness works. As if, what, they couldn't be fucking moved if they were to be... I think they were terrorized as fucking kids and that's why they're passing it down to the next generation instead of standing up to their shithead fucking abusive parents. Instead of standing up to the motherfuckers that hurt them, they just rather hurt innocent little boys and girls she's been in the shit out of my fucking ear it hurts it's uncomfortable is it gonna go back I don't like you I hate you why are you putting your fucking hands on me you fucking sick fuck are ears even supposed to bend forward like that is it gonna fucking bend back when you're done what the fuck is the matter with you just cause you wanna just kinda of barely fucking bend it motherfucker she put it all the way to my fucking head ugh it gives me the heebie jeebies just thinking about it right now it's not comfortable, but I have to be able to speak for myself. It was important for my abusers not for me to speak for myself. When Kathy abused me and I told her to stop, 
she would have stopped for the rest of my life, but my abusers made sure I apologized to her so I would always get abused. The best way to get into my abuser's life, to get into their heart, to their cockles, abuse their children. They love people who abuse their children. People that love and respect their children, they hate love and respect. They don't want that. If you're not going to be our scapegoat, if you're not going to let us exploit your fucking labor and your slavery, then what a bunch of psychos. The Rhythm Zero experiment teaches us that humans will do the worst things to each other if allowed to do so. And that's exactly what Barbara Couts Williams, she was a fucking terrible, violent psychopath. I wasn't allowed to speak up. I wasn't allowed to tell her that she was hurting my ear. She was hurting my body. If I did, I would get abused further. You can't defend yourself. You have to just sit there and let's keep this quiet. Hush, child. You're it's just a boy. Nobody's going to give a shit about you. You're, you're supposed to love girls, but the boys? That's what my mother said. She didn't know you were supposed to love the boys. When I went to jail for a college prank, I stole a sticker machine. She's in the background shouting, keep them in jail. Forever? You want me? I mean, God, when I think about how skinny and small I was at 18, she was ready for the people in prison to rape my little body for three years at least. How could she say something like that? Unless she was a sick fucking pile of shit. The reason why she needs to abuse my siblings' bodies, it gets out her aggression. It's just a little fun sport for her. It's a little fun little thing she does. I chased a woman to Texas. And it was sweet and romantic. But you know what she said? She cared what my abuser thought. My abuser wouldn't fucking love you like this. But there's nothing more... So no, no, I can't tell Barbara. She's been in my ear. You're hitting my body. I don't like it. I don't have parents to tell. She's hitting my body and I don't like it. They don't give a sh They're not my mother and father. They never intended to be my mother and father. My abuser once said she didn't ever even remember me getting hit. So I got hit hundreds, if not thousands of times. It was every fucking night. Every time she made a fucking meal, she'd make a five course meal for him. And I would just be scared and getting hit and yelled at every fucking time. So when she says she can't remember a single time, when I'm 17, I wrecked my car and he's acting like he's going to hit me and she gets hysterical and she says, no, this stops today. What stops today? The 17 years of violent abuse that you never fucking told me was violent abuse? When he picked my mother up, did he beat the shit out of her and made her love? You're going to love me whether you like it or not. He wouldn't have won her over. Her family wouldn't have let her keep her. She said it hurt her, but it didn't. She couldn't even whisper out, don't do that. I think it turned her on, and I think she loved it. It happened every fucking day. She couldn't squeak out the little bit. She one time talked to me when I'm like 13, and we talked all night, and nothing changed, and it was no fucking different, and it was like, you stole my soul and my life and my mind, and you're just a dumb, ugly piece of shit. No, you don't get to... You have to stay. Lucy and Kevin has to stay out of my life for the rest of my life. They have to stay out of my life for the rest of my life. I get to choose who I get to. This is my house. This is my land. And if I don't want you, even if I just don't like your fucking face. Nah, I don't like your fucking face. Get the fuck out of here. You just got to go. But I could see motherfuckers, my abusers coming up here wanting to abuse some more. And then me abusing them back. Nah, the abuse stops here to you, you motherfucker. The abuse stops today. And other motherfuckers being like, well, my mother and father was sweet and nice to me. And they're always good. You saying you don't like them, it just doesn't make any sense. Did you grow up in Oregon? Hundreds of times. She don't remember a single time I got attacked. What a lying pile of shit. And she's talking to me. So is she lying to my fucking face? I, I remember all those fucking times. So the fact that she would sit there and try to tell me she's lying because she don't want to be held to account... She don't want to say that she's sorry. And she's an ugly, wicked motherfucker. Maybe she did ignore it all. She's just such a wicked motherfucker. It doesn't matter who's getting murdered or raped or who's getting robbed or attacked in front of her. She just ignores it. She don't know right from wrong. Torture, abuse, enslavement. She once said, what's slavery? 
It's when you're working for someone else for nothing, motherfucker. That's what slavery is. Why don't you understand that? Maybe Camillus actually treated her like a person and not the rest of them or something. I don't know. Maybe at first it, she, it hurt her. But after the first or two years, she, she got used to it. She turned on me. Well, my husband's going to beat the shit out of my little boy and I ain't going to do a fucking thing about it because I'm not a mother and I never intended to be a fucking mother. I was just going to let him beat the fuck out of any fucking body and anything and I'm too scared to stand up and I'm not going to admit to any of this. Instead of thinking, God, that motherfucker got tortured and beat up all them fucking years. I should love him more and, you know, shower him extra. It's worse. It's like... We abuse, we've always been abusing you. We're going to continue to abuse you. We will never stop abusing you. Wow. So you're the ugliest person that could ever fucking be. You come to my fucking house. You look right in my fucking face. And you lie right to my face. I don't remember you ever getting hit. You don't remember any of those times? So that's how big of a psycho you are. God damn you. What a psycho motherfucker. Because that happened hundreds if not thousands of times. You remember it. You're just an ugly motherfucker. You're an ugly motherfucker and you don't want to ever fucking have to pay for your fucking sins and your crimes. You all met my abuser. You all as nice as shit. If I smacked the shit out of my abuser, you would fucking be appalled. I remember one guy saying, oh, what are you going to do to him? Motherfucker, I'm frustrated with this. I just want to articulate so I can understand where I fucking sit in this fucking world. It's bullshit. It's like the cops. You all think cops could do no wrong? Well, I got attacked and raped by cops. So y'all forced me to defend myself. What am I supposed to say? Well, cops are always right. But you know, I was, uh, yeah, I was robbing a bank that day. Just to make up shit? No, I was a perfect victim. I was walking to the store to buy some fucking milk. I didn't do a goddamn thing. You tried to run me over? I said, hey, for, you know, uh, you said get the fuck out of the road because you tried to run me over. And it's like, okay, you fucking white trash hoodlums. And that's another thing. Growing up, I wasn't a troublemaker. I was an angel. Obedient, straight A's, basically a Boy Scout, a dutiful altar boy. Played on the basketball team. I was on the academic team, valedictorian. Straight A's, I would get beat up if I didn't get a B, if I got a B plus or an A minus. Absolute perfection is what was expected out of me, and that's what I did. But nothing's good for a fascist. So 17 years of perfection, I don't ever remember making a decision for myself or thinking for myself. That's not what my abusers demanded. Teachers, principals, students, neighbors, friends, family, boss, coach. They didn't want a conversation. They didn't want to get to know me. And they didn't want to say, here's what we want for you. They didn't want the flower to bloom. They wanted obedience. And that's it. Shut up, sit down, do as you're told. I like playing Nintendo. Play with micro machines. And I also play with dirt clods. You know, when you play with dirt clods because it's just a fucking clod of dirt. That could be a fat man. That could be a car. That could be an airplane. Playing with dirt clods percolated my mind the most. You know how it was when we were growing up, when we were playing with dirt clods and because we had no toys. People had like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They had like toys. I remember Alice and Larry, who's like the most regressive Christians out there. <laughs> but they had all the fucking new Nintendos and shit. So they were the most modern. They were the most modern and the most traditional. They had a value set. So in 1992, Barbara just, you know, I'm at, um, I want to say Value City, some discount clothing department store, Southside Covington. And she drove all the way out there. I don't know why, but okay, got on the interstate, drove out there. She liked the place. Barbara and I are at the checkout counter in line about to pay for the goods. There's a black woman in front of us, and apparently she didn't have enough money or something. And Barbara said something like, this is what these stupid N-words, you know, this is how they are. And she said it like real mean and angrily, and nobody said anything. The black woman didn't, the clerk didn't say anything. She said it out in public real loud. It was embarrassing. That's not me. I didn't realize she harbored such evil thoughts. And what was weirder was the black woman and the clerk took it. They didn't say nothing about it. White people protect their child abusing, fascist, racist, criminal fucking grandparents to the hilt. In spite of logic and common sense, in spite of the well-being of the species. I've stood up to my racist family. And it's not easy. And it's... Uh, the, my, my, it's not just racism, they're wicked they have no ethics or morals you heard about somebody getting abused and you just shrugged your shoulders you adopted one million crimes 
I've tried to tell a lot of different people about this. And I look at Bobby Fischer. He's one of the greatest Americans out there. And he got beat up and tortured by the cops. And it's like, did any of you, any of you all reach out to Bobby Fischer? Did one single American reach out to Bobby Fischer? He got beat up and tortured by the cops. He's the smartest motherfucker American person ever. He got beat up and tortured by the cops. Shouldn't you give a shit? Well, that's bullshit. Barbara's husband husband listened to Rush Limbaugh. He made a racist joke about black people, basketball. They look like monkeys when they dunk. And Barbara Williams just buckled over, cackling with laughter like a racist hyena, the sick racist. I hated her eyebrows. She was awful all by herself, but she painted her fucking eyebrows on, and it just she looked like a wicked motherfucker. Maybe that's a secret I never understood. She's a woman, and me as a boy who would eventually grow up to be a man, I guess I'm supposed to... So to love Barbara's unnatural painted on eyebrows so goddamn much that she's allowed to be as cruel and racist as mean as she could possibly get. What good does her painted on eyebrows do to me? Was that good? It, it, I'm a fucking. I need a mature adult who needs who's gonna take care of my needs and understand that I'm a developing child and that they they understand Piaget, Vygotsky, and Maslow. I need an adult. I need an adult, human, mature person in my life that is talking to me and relating to me. Guiding me, educating me, something. I'd rather have. I'd rather have had a grandmother I could confide in and talk to, whether she had bushy eyebrows or not. It's not about her fucking painted on eyebrows. But um, she had that WAP, right? She had that WAP. She made a man who abused my father and aunt very, very happy, orgasmically happy, and so it didn't matter if she was a good person or not. She had a man in her life. She had her house. She got where she was going. She got her Maslow and Piaget and Vygotsky. Or maybe she didn't. But um, when I'm without these things, it's incredible that all these other motherfuckers that my abusers made sure was in my life have all their needs met. And they're wicked motherfuckers. So you probably shouldn't have gave a shit <laughs> at all. 1992, I remember, I remember a bathroom incident, and it was mild, but it was, um, she wanted to see my naked body, I'm 10 years old, so it's like, I've been going to school for three or four years, not three, and then about the third time, I mean, she, I guess she made it seem like just didn't want me to get water on the floor or something, but she's drying me off after I take a shower. She's coming in and drying me off. And after the third time, I was like, "What do you? I could dry myself off. What are you doing?" And she seemed somewhat embarrassed and told uh, told me she uh, had dried me off so I didn't splash water all over the floor. Uh, yeah, right. You hit me when I was real young, and my parents are abusing me too. So. You probably didn't know that I, there's a thinking person behind these scared little eyes that's not expressing himself at all. And you thought it was okay. 10? At 10? You, you were 10. How do you not know that you're conscious, that you're alive? She didn't know Piaget. She didn't know Vygotsky. She didn't know Maslow. I remember her smoking in the car. She's got these painted on eyebrows. She's smoking in the car. She hit me them t many times when I was that nasty cigarette smoke. She would crack the window, but it was just between the nicotine poisoning and the tobacco fields and breathing in her secondhand smoke. She smelt bad, looked bad, had the fucking brown teeth, brown fucking... She just gave a shit. She would have won me over forever, but apparently to fascists, they just think they own you. They rob you from the cradle, and they always own you. They don't even try. They don't even try to talk to you, try to tell you a joke. They don't try to be encouraging. They don't try to... Nothing. They don't try to appeal to you in any way, shape, or form. Just straight up violent terrorism. And then if that doesn't work, more terrorism and more violence. Just keep on upping it. You think you're a human? 1999, Barbara Williams joked about aborting my sister. Kelly, Lucy's pregnant with Kelly at the time. And we're on the setter, and she's on the edge of the setter. And you get off the edge, and you get the tobacco plants, and... She got back on the setter and almost fell off. And then Barbara's like, well, I'll push you off so you have an abortion or something. Something about, good, I hope you do fall off. And then maybe you won't have that baby. 
she didn't laugh and it looked like she was hurt, but she didn't defend herself and she's been voting against abortion rights ever since. She's been trying to make Barbara love her, but abor- uh, Barbara made a joke about aborting her kid. Barbara was a Republican. She's a, a Christian, so... But it wasn't a joke. That was Barbara's true feelings. She hated Lucy, so she was going to hate Lucy's kids. And she probably hated her damn kids, too. Barbara was a very selfish person. She tried to be kind a few times. She didn't give a shit if she was loved by me or if I was loved by her. She didn't care. She wasn't in my life. She was an abuser, and she died. And thank goodness, what a fucking relief. She won't abuse anybody ever again. But she never felt like, damn, I was a terrible grandmother to him. I never really encouraged him or talked to him or did anything. Violence is all she cared about. She was just a savage, violent pile of shit. That's the only thing fascist, psychos. And then when I don't have, and then it goes to too many folks show insane devotion and loyalty to parents who beat the shit out of them. Some of you all had good parents. I think no matter what, children are going to love their parents if they're terrible or great. So if you had great parents, count your lucky fucking stars. And if somebody has shitty parents, know that you're the best parent that they got. And if you're not even, if they're not, then nobody. I can always think the best of them wasn't disappointing. My mother's parents died when she was young, so she could just, you know, my mom and dad were so good. They weren't. Barbara wasn't a big part of my life. I go to college, and then she's working at the, then she becomes a bigger part down there. Apparently, Barbara was more part of the family. Lucy respected Barbara. Lucy loved Barbara, respected Barbara, cared about her health, cared about her problems, cared about her issues. She related to Barbara, related to her child abuse, related to her racism, related to her criminality. But she wasn't there in my childhood. So I go to college. Barbara comes in. So maybe that was a good thing. She wasn't a big part of my life. The parents and siblings would go to her house every year for Christmas. It was awful. She had this little... She had a nice house. It was too nice. Big ass house and boring. And my, Me and my siblings are already scared. Here's another child abuser with a house that's too perfect to live in. And stupid ass little fucking Christmas tree. And crappy fucking... Goddamn gifts and over the top crystal plates and wine and shit. And I guess I maybe I, I drank a little wine, so it was kind of like, okay, maybe they're okay, somewhat all right, but I'd rather just shove tacos in my mouth at fucking Taco Bell and talk to people that I can relate to and that love me and I love them back and laugh and enjoy life and not have to worry about the dumb shit. The old man would lightly cap on Robert Williams, the stepdad, so I guess that's how he dealt with his abuser got him into a position where he felt like he could insult him a bit and maybe he was daring him to, you know, do more. But since I wasn't talking to my abusers, they wouldn't have known if Robert or Barbara abused me. They wouldn't know. They just, uh, She knows a little bit now, but she doesn't care. She didn't care then. She doesn't care now. So I couldn't imagine if he had cared. And if they had abused you, why are you taking us to their houses? I wish they would have taken me to Ralph Benton Deaton's house, uh, Kevin's father, my grandfather, my paternal grandfather. Instead of going to Barbara's house and the stepdad, go to the fucking father's house. He was sweet and kind and funny and, and wealthy and successful and good and good. Instead, Lucy said, he didn't give a shit about us, never reached out. She was struggling by herself. Then I mentioned it to him, and then they all want to get mad at me, but that's that's my fucking problem. When Lucy and Kevin had nobody, she had they had me. They had us. And you might not understand it, and maybe there's a danger your your kids could, you know, accidentally set the house on fire. Or they could be competent. We did our chores. We was able to do homework. When we were latchkey kids, that's the best part of the... And we were able to not set the house on fire. So you're goods and property was protected you had your house your land and then that's where your loved ones are right who lives in your house so we gave you a soul we gave you a reason to live we were your witnesses we were your friends other people didn't say hey that's kevin and lucy they, they said that's a mother and father they have kids so they were more important than just some individuals 
So when I ask for a witness, when I ask for a meeting of the minds, when I want to make a connection, I'm getting beat up if I don't make straight A's. But uh, I asked her to le learn 10 words. She don't even know them today. It wasn't important for her to ever relate to me. She didn't care if any word that she ever said related to me because she's a manipulative fucking prick. Her words are to manipulate me, not to relate to me, not to express who the hell she is. It's to oppress me. Barbara's had stupid Christmas. Barbara had stupid Christmases. We were the show. We were the show. We got there, and we were the interesting ones. But after 2000, she calls me as I'm juggling a job at Pilot a Corn and Cantaloupe Stand. I'm selling cantaloupe on the side of the road and all over the place. Florence and Bellevue, um, uh, Covington. Gallatin is where I started it, Gallatin County. But uh, the old man would tell me that he just told her to do it as if that was okay. Barbara, you know, calls me up, says don't come to her house for Christmas since I wouldn't get along with the old man. And then she hangs up. She just wanted to talk at me. She had no love and respect. She was an ugly piece of shit from the beginning to the end. And, you know, I didn't think nothing of it at the time. But I guess apparently she showed me. My abusers, they, ba they babied Barbara. They, they were a better mother and father to Barbara than they were to their son. They were a better mother and father to the father's mother than they were to their son, who was their kid and their baby, you know, at one point in time. A moral grandmother would object to hurting her grandchildren, but Barbara was all about it. She loved the... Uh, the violence hurt my grandkid. Hell yeah. Why didn't you ask me yesterday? I'll go get the binder. The phone call is weird to begin with. Barbara Williams never really called me. And you know what? It was awesome that she did call me. Did you actually have something that you want to say to me? Oh, you just want to fuck me over. Because if she would have said, hey, you know, I really want you to become a lawyer. And here I got this law book and we're going to get you to be good, go, go to law school. But she couldn't think like that. She's an ugly, racist piece of shit. She hates the black man. She's got her fucking house. She's got her life. She's doing good. She don't want none of it to change. So to care about someone else's well-being? And I'm going through shit anyways, motherfucker. I'm homeless, and she calls me up, and it's real quick. Hi, don't come to Christmas. Okay, bye. Yeah, I'd never liked your stupid fucking Christmases anyways. But then there was nothing else. Uninvite me and then forget I ever fucking lived. Like a fucking... It sucked because I loved her and I wanted her to talk to me. And it was like, oh, cool. My grandmother. What's up, grandma? Oh, oh, he told you to fuck me over and you're going to go ahead and just obey him because he's a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. Everybody's a piece of shit. You've been fucking me ever since I was born, right? Remember that time you hit me when I was, yeah, fucking four, you ugly motherfucker? I'm glad you're dead because I don't want to ever get hit like that again. I don't want to feel alone. I didn't have anybody. I didn't have a mother or father that I could confide in and talk to. And, it, and like my mother said, it didn't matter who the fuck would have attacked me. She wouldn't have fucking listened and done shit anyways. She was always an ugly piece of shit. She's a selfish, greedy motherfucker. If her kids are being abused, she don't give a damn. She never intended to be a mother. So she hurt my feelings a little bit, but I've heard, you know, I should thank her because really when people act like her, I, there's a piece of shit here at uh, Conejos County with eyebrows, painted on eyebrows, ugly motherfucker at the elections branch. Fucking ugly motherfucker. She fucked me over twice. Huh, you paint your eyebrows just like her. I bet you're ugly. I bet you're as ugly as your fucking eyebrows are, you ugly fucking pile of shit. I remember I went and got a checking account at US Bank and he was like, hey, come here and sign me up for a checking account. You motherfuckers have been shittier to me than nice to me. The reason why I remember that a U.S. bank in Minneapolis gave me a checking account is because you all, I, mm, I'll tell you my bank stories later, but, uh, okay, yeah, me and my old man's not getting along, but, uh, did you want to talk to me, me and you want to talk? Do you want to hang out or go somewhere? I'm going to college, you know, I'm out here by myself, you do want to know, now you're just a piece of shit. Trying to fuck me over. They want to fuck me over. You want to fuck me over. I've been the scapegoat motherfucking black Jew that you've been attacking the entire time. You're a dumb, ugly motherfucker. So you're actually jealous of the possibility that I might get out of this shithole. <laughs> I might actually 
not be poor like you sons of bitches? You know how poor they were? They didn't have a pot, a pot to piss in. 